Hello, my name is Matthias and welcome to the FPL Scope and my team selection video for Game Week 32. But before we take a look at what I'm going to do in Game Week 32, we're going to see what I did in Game Week 31. And I had a pretty good Game Week actually. I got another green arrow finally after two red arrows in a row, two small red arrows in a row. I got a green arrow to get me back to where I was basically three Game Weeks ago. And I'm actually quite surprised that I got a green arrow because I didn't have the best captain C choice. I had uh, Salah who got one point only. That means two points for Salah as my captain. And I also didn't have Foden. So I was pretty surprised to see that I got actually a decently good green arrow from this game week because it didn't feel like it was going to go, going to go that way when Foden got his hat trick and got 20 points and he's not in my team anymore. So uh, yeah, pretty happy about my game week uh, in that instance uh, because yeah, after Foden scored, I was just sure it was going to be a really, really bad game week. But luckily, I had some really nice fortune on my side with both Saka and Holland missing out this game week. And my substitutes were Garnacho and Sabarni, giving me 21 points off the bench. Hugely lucky uh, jam, as we call it, from those two guys. Garnacho getting two goals against Chelsea. Absolutely fantastic to see. I've had Garnacho for such a long time now, and I've benched him every time he's had a haul. And I did that this time as well, but finally, I actually had him sub on as uh, a bench option, finally, with a lot of points. So 14 points from Garnacho. Sabarni kept the clean sheet, which I was kind of unhappy about on the, the Tuesday when he get, got the clean sheet. But then when Holland didn't end up playing um, after, yeah, in, in his match, I was really happy to see Sabarni get his seven points off the bench as well for me. So Sabarni has been an amazing player for me, getting uh, both the goal in the double game week and also this time getting a clean sheet and a bonus point on top of that. So really happy about that. Garnacho obviously 14 points finally uh, was really due some points from Garnacho after being pretty unlucky with him this whole season. I've been pretty lucky with him in this game week in particular, so pretty happy about that. I uh, also did one transfer that was uh, Oli Watkins out for Darwin Nunez. This was pretty much a uh, planned transfer regardless of what was happening with Watkins. I did not expect him to be injured, but he was out for sure anyway, so it made it even easier to just sell him. Pretty happy about uh, signing Darwin. I could have gone for Cunha as well, but he didn't start in the game against Burnley, so I went for the safe option in Darwin, and I'm pretty happy about that considering Darwin scored a goal. Did sort of expect more against Sheffield United than just six points, but at the same time, six points is more than just a regular blank, so... I'm pretty happy with that as well. So, uh, pretty good game week in general. Also had Aitnori with eight points, getting a goal, and uh, yeah, just again being a really good option. And Gabriel being uh, another good defensive option for Arsenal, getting a clean sheet. So, uh, that was basically where the points came from, apart from Palmer, obviously, who scored a hat trick against Man United of his own. Two penalty kicks uh, that he scored, and then the final goal to get Chelsea the winner there in that match as well. So, yeah, super good from, uh, from Palmer, obviously, but that doesn't really make much of a change in the overall rank for me because most people have Darwin or have the Palmer at this point. If you don't have Palmer, you just need to get him at this point. It's it's just, it's been too long. You should have had him for a long, long while already. But, but yeah, 20 points for Palmer, he's absolutely amazing. I was also really close to getting another huge hole this game week and that was from Dubravka, which is kind of interesting considering he had only two points this game week. But he did keep a clean sheet until the 85th minute when Newcastle conceded a penalty against Everton. And De Broca actually got his hand to the penalty that Dominic Calvert Lewin took. It was a really poor penalty, and De Broca went the right way, but he still didn't manage to save it. But if he had saved that, he would have had 15 points this game week because he would have had the clean sheet intact, most likely, unless he had conceded later on. He would have gotten five points from the penalty save. He would have gotten three saves as well on top of that, and he would have gotten a three bonus points. So a huge 13 point swing there from the penalty not being saved from De Broca, but. Again, that would be really lucky if that would have happened, and I didn't really expect him to keep a clean sheet either because, yeah, Newcastle have just been conceded every single game week, and they did it once again, so can't be really too mad about that. But at the same time, really close to a huge haul again. But all in all, I think I, was, I can consider myself pretty lucky this game week, getting a green arrow, and now up to 1,944 points total, 11.8k overall, three points only behind the top 10k now, uh, which is looking really, really good for me. I'm hoping to break into the top 10k pretty soon hopefully next game week even, uh, but we'll see what happens there. But yeah, Solanke also blanked two points from him, Son blanked two points from him as well. Got to mention those guys because it's quite disappointing, uh, I guess. Well, Son against West Ham, I was pretty happy to see him not score, but uh, you did expect Son to score in that game. And the sort of downside to all of this where it could have gone so much better is the fact that I did have the option between selling Son and selling Foden when I brought in Salah last week. 
And, uh, and yeah, Sala Inn was always the plan that was always going to happen, but who I was going to sell was more up in the air. But I just preferred Son as an option just because it's been more consistent over the years, basically. But I think Foden at this point is probably a better asset than Son. Um, but, but yeah, Son is on penalties and all that stuff. He's the more the main man at Spurs, even though Foden now is all of a sudden the main man at City, playing when De Bruyne and, and Holland were out. And he was super central and scored again a really nice hat trick, uh, Foden. So. I wish I'd gone with Foden rather than Son, because I also, if I'd done that, I would have sold. Um, uh, I wouldn't have sold uh, Van Dijk um, a couple of game weeks ago as well, because uh, that was uh, my option. I had to sell Van Dijk, downgrade Van Dijk, basically to get enough money to go from Foden to Salah rather than going from Son to Salah. So, if I had Van Dijk still and Foden still, I think that would have been better than having Son and whoever I brought in in defense. I can't remember exactly who I brought in. Maybe it was Sabarni actually. So happy about getting Sabarni after all, but. But either way, uh, I wish I had Foden, but uh, can't really be too mad about that. But at the same time, Son now has a double game again, 35, so I don't want to sell him either. Uh, Saka is probably the one I have to sell, but I'm going to keep him until double game week 30, 34, obviously. So Foden will just have to be outside of the squad until game week 35 at this point, which, which is a bit of a risk. But at the same time, now that F Foden, or now that De Bruyne and Hola have rested and Foden has not rested, maybe one of the next two games is where Foden gets his rest. So maybe I'll get some. Um, yeah, assistance there from Pep not playing uh, Foden when he's in such good form. So hopefully I can uh, I can get that. But Foden is an amazing asset that I wish I still had. But either way, his 20 points is something that I won't be able to get because I didn't have him this game week. So let's move on to the next section of this uh, video. And that is looking at my free hit draft for game week 31. I do a free hit, free hit draft in this video every single game week. And I'm going to do that in this video as well. I'm going to have a free hit draft for Game Week 32 or like an FPL Challenge draft as well, potentially. But FPL Challenge this week is kind of interesting. So but either way, FPL Challenge, I don't really care that much. Most people don't really care that much. It seems like next Game Week in Game Week 33, they're actually going to have like a the whole gimmick is getting minus five points from yellow cards and minus eight points from red cards. So it's kind of a silly game anyway. But, but yeah, I'm going to have a free hit draft slash FPL Challenge draft coming up. But let's take a look at my free hit draft slash... FPL Challenge draft from this past game week. Um, so yeah, my free draft in game week 31 actually scored less points than my own team, 61 points uh, it got in total. Also a couple of uh, auto subs here in this team. I obviously had the Edison Ortega combo because I knew either one of them would start on a free hit, and uh, and yeah, I quite liked uh, either of them as a as a goalkeeper this game. Um, but Mart uh, Ortega still got a two-pointer, so he's on with two points there. Also got Hoyland with two points coming on for Saka as well, who was my first bench option there, Hoyland, who actually did start in the FPL Challenge team uh, game because uh, forwards got double points, but that's not the case in regular FPL. Uh, but either way, pretty similar team to what I had uh, myself. Gabriel getting six points, Aitnor getting eight points, Bradley scoring an own goal getting zero points, so he sort of equaled Gusto in that effect. Uh, Salah captain on both teams, uh, he got two points on both teams, Son with two points on both teams, Palmer with 20 points for both teams, uh, Isak with eight points, which was really nice, and, and Darwin with six points. Well, Isak with eight points was nice for my free hit draft, but not for my overall rank, overall rank, because I don't have Isak, who's a terrific player. But I think the main difference between the teams was basically the fact that I had Garnacho coming on on the other team and having Hoeven coming on on this team. That made me get actually more points on my regular team than my free hit draft, which is not that uncommon, actually. So I think the free hit chip is kind of overrated in terms of like single game week usage. Uh, I say that as someone that used it in game week 29, obviously, uh, where it massively failed. Uh, but I don't think you're going to get that big of an advantage using your free hit in any other game week. But we'll see what happens in game week 34. Maybe you guys with free hit 34 are going to have tremendous game weeks uh, or have a tremendous game week uh, that game week. And... and outpaced me severely in that game week but yeah we'll see what happens anyway but for this free draft um pretty happy overall i did take a punt on harvard he did score but wasn't really quite enough uh, compared to garnacho who had my own team so, so yeah it sort of fall, fell short a little bit but at the same time can't really fault the suggestions either or the the selections eight points from from Salah captain darwin and bradley in total is is so much less than i expected against sheffield united uh, at home especially but, but yeah it is what it is anyway so, so yeah three through through one drafts uh at least my three differentials did uh, did uh, my three favorite differentials did well darwin got six points scored a goal harvard got an assist five points for him and i know he got a goal as well with eight points uh, himself so, so yeah pretty happy with the differentials but at the same time could have done a lot better this week this week when it comes to the free draft but 
yeah, it is what it is, like I said. Let's also now move to see what was actually the best team you could have had or one of the best teams you could have had in Game 31 with, uh, by going to the manager of the week this week. And that was Dave Collins, who got 97 points in the FPL Scope Mini League. And as always, I say this every time we have the manager of the week segment, you can also be the manager of the week if you join the FPL Scope Mini League with the league called V9JT0D. And if you get the most amount of points in one particular game week, you get featured on either the podcast, the FPL Scope podcast, which I haven't done in a long while now with Kevin. We're going to have that next week for sure. Um, or you're going to get featured here on the team section video, just like Dave Collins is for this video, because he got 97 points this week. And that was mostly, again, down to the captaincy choice, which was the same thing last week. Having a differential captain when the main super template captain fails is often a really good uh, way to success in uh, being the manager of the week. So Palmer captain, 20 points times two, 40 points from, from Palmer this game week. Absolutely amazing. Also, similarly to me, getting that bench jam from uh, Garnacho with 14 points. And apart from that, it's basically Foden with 20 points as well, obviously. Foden and Palmer, uh, captain, that's 40 points in total that, that I didn't have myself. And that's basically the, the gist of it for the team. Also, David Ryan goal, which is a really nice uh, thing to have. Double Arsenal defense, going to help tremendously for the rest of the season, I think, as well. Virgil van Dijk also getting two points is not the best for this game week, but I think Virgil van Dijk is going to be a really good player to have, especially for double game week 34. So looking at this manager, has already used wildcard in game week 25 and free hit in game week 29, which is kind of interesting, kind of different from what most people do. Still have triple captaincy left. And the thing that I have noted with this team is the fact that they don't have Salah. And Salah is a hugely popular player currently in NFL, and for good reason, because he has decent fixtures now, obviously, but also the double game against 34. And seeing as this manager doesn't have free hit, doesn't have wild card, getting Salah in for game 34 is probably going to be the priority going forward. But for this game week, didn't need him. Salah got one point. Palmer captaincy got 20 extra points, and Foden got 28 points as well on top of that. So more than enough to be the manager of the week with 97 points, getting a nice boost on the overall rank up to 261k overall or 262k overall. It's also interesting to see that this manager is exactly 100 points behind me. So 100 points is worth 250,000 ranks, uh, it seems like, because I'm ar around 10k and this manager is around 260k. And there's 100 points between us. So that's interesting to see. But yeah, gaming rank of 42,459. 42, also pretty decent. Obviously, a lot of things that could have gone better with this team. Virgil van Dijk banking two points. Brantford getting two points banking. Lamptey getting one point uh, with the blank. Solanke and Tony both blanking with two points each. Could have gone so much better. And also the transfer is kind of interesting or kind of strange, uh, to be honest. Robertson to Trippier when Trippier was most likely going to be injured this game. Um, I don't really know why. I guess you could have just rolled the transfer and still had Robertson with four points. So uh, rather than having Lamptey in the team, for example. So you kind of dropped out of the three points there, which would have gotten you to the 100 point mark. So not quite sure what happened there. Maybe you expected Trippier to be fully fit to play this game, but I think for what it's worth, I think Trippier is going to be a nice player to have for the rest of the season. I think he's going to be a super good differential for anyone that wildcarded in 31 or gave me 30 who went without him because he's injured. All of us that have the wildcard left for Gaming 35, for example, I think Trippier is going to be a really popular option because Newcastle have really good fixtures and Trippier, historically at least, has been a really good player when it comes to bonus points, assists, and all that stuff. So I think he's going to be a really nice player for the future, but I don't think for this particular game week you really needed Trippier this game week because uh, obviously he was injured uh, and he could have just had those four Robertson points. But for what it's worth, Robertson came off the bench, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he got an assist in the end anyway, so four points from Robertson, but could easily have those points as well. But, but yeah, that's basically it for, for this week's score. Um, let's take a look at the next week plans for Dave Collins and his team. And yeah, one free transfer left, and I think you can do what you should have done last week probably, and that's just stand pat and have the team that you have. I think you have a pretty strong team already with the double arsenal defense, Ryan Gabriel, should be really good next part in a way. Virgil van Dijk is, is a decent option regardless of which game week it is. And I think Man United have struggled to score against Liverpool the last few times they've met them. I think van Dijk could easily score from a set piece as well. So I think van Dijk is actually a pretty decent option this week. And Brantwick against Burnley at home is also a really nice option. Burnley still aren't the best team, but they have been scoring a lot lately to my detriment because I've had players playing against them all the time and they keep scoring and deleting my clean sheets. But maybe that won't happen with, uh, with Brantwick this time around. Uh, Foden and Holland obviously against Crystal Palace away. Really, really nice double up there. I think both has the potential to start. Foden might get dropped, uh, might get rested for one of these games, but, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, it's still a decent option for now. Sonning is something for us at home. Really, really good, uh, good option. 
even a really good captain's option, but I think Palmer now is the standout captain for anyone that doesn't have Salah at least, because uh, Palmer is just in absolutely fantastic form and has, unlike a lot of other players, been actually really good against these newly promoted teams like Sheffield United, for example. So um, Sheffield United away, I think it's a really good opportunity for Palmer to be to be captain. He's going to be the most popular captain this uh, game week by quite a distance, I think, as well. Uh, but there are some other options. For example, Sonny against Nottingham Forest at home and Salah against Man United away. I think those two are pretty good options. But seeing as this team does not have Salah, having Son as, as a vice captain is also a good decision, or potentially as a captain is also potentially a good decision. I think that should be a really good game for Son um, as well. So, yeah, Son and Palmer are really good. Saka, again, not 100% sure if he's going to be able to start this game week, but Brighton away is a really nice game week if he gets uh, fit enough to play. Didn't play this past uh, game against Luton, but maybe he just got a fully deserved rest, uh, Saka, and he's going to be back for this game week. Um, but yeah, I think he's a, a nice starter for now, at least. Uh, then up front, Holland, I already mentioned. Tony is Aston Villa away. It's actually a pretty good fixture. Aston Villa conceded a lot of goals lately, so I think Tony is still a nice keep. Uh, he's probably the one that is like the odd one out for the team, but I'm going to get more into him later when I just go through the rest of the team as well. Uh, Solanke against Luton away. Also a really good option still. Uh, Solanke obviously plays in AV34 as a double game week player, so he's really nice to keep as well. Hope he can score against Luton and his third time against Luton in the league this season, considering they had that uh, game that was postponed because of Tom Lockyer's heart issue. But Solanke actually scored in that game and should have scored uh, several times against Luton in the other game, so I think that's a really good game for Solanke as well. On the bench, Ariola is going to be injured, so he's going to be out anyway, but that doesn't matter because you have Raya in goal. Garnacho against Liverpool at home, I don't think it's the worst substitution in case Saka doesn't play, so I think Garnacho could score in that game. Liverpool tend to concede at least one goal per game, or ish. Uh, Garnacho could easily be that guy to, to score on the counter for Man United, but at the same time, I do expect Virgil van Dijk and Liverpool to make it tough for Man United, so yeah, it's nice to bench him, but he's not the worst bench option, as we've seen this past game week, if you need him for Saka, potentially. Uh, Lamptey as well, not the best option, playing against Arsenal, not sure if he's going to start or not, but again, playing against Arsenal, you probably don't want him to play at all, and he's he's benched. And then Trippier, who's still going to be injured for this game week against Fulham away, that would have been a pretty decent fixture, but I still think I would have played all the other defenders ahead of Trippier, even if it was fit to play, but, but yeah, that's basically it for the team. But yeah, I did mention Tony, um, maybe that's something that uh, you guys watching will react when it comes to when it comes to Tony, he seems like the odd one out, doesn't have any double game weeks coming up. Um, and yeah, it seems like this team, which with no wall card and no uh, free hit left, should try to get double gaming players in and sell single gaming players. But Tony has two really good fixtures coming up now. Aston Villa away, I think it's a really good fixture for him. And then next week he plays Sheffield United at home. So I think you can keep Tony for this game week and next game week and then sell him, downgrade him to get the money to get Salah in game 34 and bring in, for example, Cunha and Salah in game 34 or a game 37 uh, double game maker in the attacking position and Salah and that triple captain Salah in game week 34 I think that should be the play for you uh, in the future basically but for this game week just stand pat save your free transfer see if you need to make any changes I think you have a really solid team on your hands going forward I just think Tony is the one that you could sell in game week 34 you can also make room for um, Salah by selling someone else in midfield I'm not sure how you would get that money maybe with the potential transfer that you save this game week you can actually do two downgrades maybe you can downgrade Trippier again, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I think Trippier is nice for the future, but maybe I have to do that to bring in Salah for, for example, Garnacho, potentially. But uh, but yeah, you could easily downgrade uh, Tony at least and get money. Maybe to do Son to, yeah, Son is actually the one that blanks in game 34, so maybe you can sell him. But at the same time, you want Son for game 35 because he has a double game week there. So I don't know, just save your transfer at least for now and see what you can do with that transfer next week and try to figure out a way to get Salah in for game 34, I think. Maybe. Maybe you want to go with someone else for triple captaincy. Maybe you want to go with Palmer or Son in the double game making 35. Um, but yeah, I think Salah is going to be a really nice option in giving 34. So I would like to see how you can get him potentially by selling Tony in uh, in game week 34 and bringing out some money that way. But, but yeah, that's basically my plans for, for your team. I think it's looking pretty good. Even though you don't have the best uh, potential chips left, you have only up triple captaincy and bench boost left. I think free hit and wall card are better in terms of just being holdovers. Free hit is really nice for you to be flexible, where you could just target gaming 37 now and free hit in 34, for example, if you have both, uh, if, or if you have the free hit left, uh, unlike Dave Collins. I think that's a really good tactic to, to free hit in 34 and just focus on 37 uh, with, your, with, with your team. But 
But yeah, when you don't have that chip left, obviously you have to do sort of half and half. Uh, when you don't have wall card or free hit left, you have to do sort of half and half and get basically the best players that double in 34 and the best players that double in 37. And then just use your bench boost whenever you feel like it, whenever it's, it looks good. Maybe that isn't giving me 35 already with the double gimme for, for Spurs and Chelsea, but yeah, maybe some Spurs and Chelsea players are also the way to go. Maybe get someone like Gusto in, in defense at some point for someone like Trippier and then do Tony to someone like Cunha and then maybe you have enough money to do Garnacho to Salah. I'm not quite sure if you have enough for that, but that could be a potential plan. Or maybe sell, maybe not even Cunha because you can bench uh, the striker. Get someone like Joe Pedro, for example, that plays in Gaming 37. You can bench him and get Salah for Gaming 34 as a starter next to all those uh, midfielders and Holland and uh, Solanke obviously as well. Or you have to bench Holland for Gaming 34 if you br br bring in Cunha in Gaming 34. But... That's a lot of uh, things you can uh, consider for the next few game weeks. But for this game week, I think standing pad is nice. And then just see what you need to do next game week. Um, if you should do a uh, Trippier to Gusto move, depends on how Trippier is looking in terms of fitness. Uh, or if you should do something else. Uh, but that's that's basically my, my uh, suggestions for you in the next week and beyond that as well. Now let's take a look at my free draft for Gaming 32. What I think is the ideal team to have currently in Gaming 32 if you have uh, basically if you can choose whatever you'd like. And I guess this would be FPL Challenge sort of team as well, but what you should note for FPL Challenge is the fact that Man United and Liverpool players who play against each other get double points, so you should probably load up on more Liverpool and Man United players for this uh, if you're playing the FPL Challenge game, uh, if you're still interested in that. But yeah, for just a simple free hit team, if you're free hitting in 32 for some reason, uh, like I said, I think it's much nicer to use it in 34, so you can use the transfer that you have for Gaming 37. I think that's a better idea so i don't think you should free it this week but if you're freeing this week this is probably the team that i would go with so ortega again in goal crystal balls away i think that's a decent match at the same time you also have petrovic on the bench you could start him as well kind of 50 50 what you should do there but i think ortega is, is a pretty good goalkeeper to have for this game week against crystal balls away when we expect man city to to quite handedly beat them uh, gabriel against uh, brighton i think it's just a simple player to have gabriel really good goal threat really good clean sheet potential so yeah, he gets picked against uh, Brighton away. Udogi against something Forest at home. I think that's a really good fixture for Spurs. I've thought that a couple times now, and Spurs have actually been disappointing. So maybe Spurs are kind of on, the, on a downward spiral. I, I don't know. It seems like they're struggling a bit more now, which is kind of interesting because they have basically their full squad back now. Uh, but I still think that's a decent fixture for them against Nottingham Forest at home. They did win their last game, so um, yeah, should be should be decent. Or no, they didn't win their last game. They drew against West Ham, but they did win the game before that against uh, Luton, I should say. Uh, so they're in decent form, I guess, but, or, yeah, they're in okay form, but Udogi against Nottingham Forest at home, super attacking uh, fullback, you expect Spurs to win that game, and uh, Udogi to do really well, so, so yeah, he's in the team. Uh, Gusto against Jeffrey United away, I think that's a really good fixture for Gusto, it's about time he gets some points now, because, yeah, he just keeps looking really promising and keeps getting five points or less uh, every single game week, so... This is probably the time for him against Jeff United away. He did uh, go through the whole game against Man United without any huge issues. He had to be subbed off pretty, well, not early, but uh, had to be subbed off after about 80 minutes because he was injured before that game. So that made sense, I guess, uh, with Gilchrist coming in for him, who's not going to be a threat for Gisto long term. Uh, Palmer against Jeff United, obviously, you need Palmer in this team as well. He's the most uh, popular captaincy choice, but I do prefer Salah this week as captain, uh, as I'll talk, to talk about in my own team as well. I just prefer Salah mostly uh, anyway, but if you want to play it safe, you probably should just go with Palmer because he's going to be the most popular captaincy choice. But I think Salah against Man United, that's one of his favorite opponents. Uh, you expect that to be a game where Liverpool try to attack and, and beat Man United, and if they can get an early goal. We've, we've seen how bad Man United are defensively, so I think that's a really good fixture for Salah. And, uh, and yeah, I just prefer him as captaincy choice, but I do really like Palmer as well this week obviously he's been terrific in pretty much every game so far this season he has a case to be made for player of the season which is crazy considering how bad Chelsea have been this season compared to what you expected from Chelsea but he's just been absolutely fantastic and speaking of player of the season potential Phil Foden as well is another potential player of the season candidate probably the leading candidate at, the, at this moment in time because he's been Man City's best player I think maybe Maybe you can make a case for Rodri there, but I think Foden has just been absolutely terrific and has decided games by himself, basically. Uh, so I think he makes sense against Crystal Palace away, which should be a decent match for City as well. Sony against Nottingham Forest at home, like I said previously, I think that's a really good game. Salah, I've already talked about him against Man United, that's a really good game. Holland against Crystal Palace as well, 
uh, should be a nice game for him. Finally, he'll be back, hopefully. Uh, he's been kind of struggling lately and hasn't been the best, but maybe this is the game where he turns it back on and basically tries, tries to secure that top scorer title. Then we have Alexander Isak, who has been a mainstay in my free drafts lately, and I really wish I sort of had in my own team as well. It's just the fact that I have that other uh, captaincy or not the other chip strategy where I'm not free when I'm not free hitting in 34 and I need double gaming 34 players and then wall carding out those players and bringing in the likes of Isak and the other players doubling in 37 in gaming 35. So haven't been able to fit him into my own team, but in the free drafts, he's been in every single one the last three game weeks, uh, game 30 and game week 31 as well. And he scored every single time as well and done really, really well. And he's just in the form of his life playing as the starting strike for Newcastle and Newcastle are providing a lot of attacks, a lot of uh, chances for Isak as well. So I think he's still my favorite forward this game week as well. So yeah, Isak is absolutely amazing. And then playing on the opposite side of Isak in what I would expect to be a quite high scoring game, because I think both these teams are teams that could concede a lot of goals. We have um, Muniz obviously from Fulham, who's uh, been also in, in terrific form, just like Isak. And playing as Newcastle at home, I think it's a really, really good fixture. So I do quite like Muniz in this fixture. I was kind of 50-50 whether I was, wanted to go with Muniz as the uh, eighth attacker or if I wanted to go with Brendan Johnson as the eighth attacker. Because Brendan Johnson is going uh, to play at home against his former side, Nottingham Forest. And Johnson has been maybe Spurs' best player the last few game weeks and has been really lethal in front of goal. I do expect him to start, so I think that's a really nice differential for you to, to choose if you can choose Johnson. Uh, I did mention him in my video where I made... Um, suggestions for who you could bring in as differentials and uh, Brendan Johnson is one of those guys because I think he's going to play quite a lot more than we expect him to the next few game weeks and he's been terrific for Spurs being in the box all the time taking up those central positions and being just an amazing player so could easily make the case for Johnson to be in this uh, starting 11 uh, instead of Muniz but I think Muniz is just a really good player in his own right so uh, yeah pretty much a 50-50 toss up there between those two guys but I really like both of those players for this game week also quite like Harvey Barnes for for Newcastle against Fulham away uh, he's been really good as well I think he's also another under the radar prospect that we haven't really talked about enough I wish I had brought him up on the differential video as well because I think Barnes is, is someone that has been overlooked because he's been absolutely amazing when he's gotten a chance for Newcastle this season it just depends to be remains to be seen if he plays opposites of Gordon now that Gordon is back from suspension or if he's going to be staying benched and then coming in for Gordon on the left uh, but I think Harvey Barnes is absolutely terrific so I think he's another really nice option to consider potentially for the run in, in this season as well then on the bench we also have uh, I already mentioned Petrovic uh, earlier so I don't really have to talk about him and then we finally have that bench that decision between Artnori and Branthwaite which I will get to in my own team because I have both of those players I just figure I should put them into the free draft as well because I'm kind of struggling who I prefer out of Artnori and Branthwaite this game week uh, myself so i'm going to talk about that in uh, my own video but yeah i think this is the best free draft or my own video my own the section about my own team uh, but i think this is the best free draft for game 32 obviously but let me know in the comments if you feel differently if there are any other huge uh, differentials or obvious players that i've missed for this uh, free draft please let me know because uh, yeah i'd like to see your thoughts and your comments because it's always fun to see other perspectives than just my own because yeah i can talk for half an hour but maybe you guys have uh, other ideas that are better than mine so please let me know if there are any players that you think should be included in the game of 32 free hit drafts as well now let's move on to the final part of the video basically uh, my team plans for game week 32 what i'm going to do this week and it's actually pretty simple i quite like my starting team uh, i do have that decision between Aitnori and branthwaite that i have to decide between uh, who am i going to start is it Aitnori against west ham at home or is it branthwaite against Burnley at home Branthwaite has the better fixture, and he also doesn't play against my favorite team, so that's sort of leaning me more towards Branthwaite, but at the same time, Ragnori is basically playing as a striker lately, so I think he has to be in the squad. He has to be in the starting 11. Um, hopefully for me, I guess, uh, Saka is out, and I get both of those guys, because I quite like the fact of having Branthwaite starting as well. Uh, but obviously, I wouldn't be too unhappy about Saka starting either, but I think Branthwaite is uh, a really good player to have this game week, so... I wouldn't mind him coming in as a sub as well. So I'm actually pretty well set when it comes to my starting team. Even if Saka's out injured, I have Branthwaite or potentially Sabarni coming in, both with pretty decent matches. So I'm not too worried about my starting uh, starting 11 in terms of my uh, outfield players. When it comes to my goalkeeper, though, I have Dubrovka. I did mention that I think Muniz and Fulham might score a couple goals against Newcastle. And in general, Newcastle have just been really bad. And my goalkeepers have been really bad. 
uh, for a long, long time with Ariola and De Broca, which I thought was going to be a winning combination a long while ago, but that hasn't proven to be the case. Uh, Ariola's out injured now as well, so yeah, he's kind of just useless there on the bench. Uh, but I still think Ariola is, um, I don't know, he might be, I don't know, maybe I should sell Ariola after all, but, but yeah, um, probably just going to do the rock of the Raya and have Raya starting for Arsenal. I've been wanting to double up on our, the Arsenal defense for a long while, and I think this is the best way to do it for me because I have a pretty nice defense. I'm pretty happy about my defenders uh, already. Um, all of them playing double game weeks in uh, game week 30, 34, apart from Gusto, who I want for the future, obviously. He plays a double game week in 35 and in 37, so I want to keep Gusto long term. So I quite like all my defenders, but I don't like my goalkeepers. So I think that's my easy way into the Arsenal defense with a double up there with uh, Gabriel alongside Raya. So I'm pretty sure that's just going to be my transfer. I'm looking to do no transfers in game week 33 and do two transfers in game week 34 before I wall card in game week 35. That's my current plan, at least. So yeah, I'd be really happy to have Raya in goal because I think Arsenal can keep a clean sheet in pretty much every single game for the rest of the season. But at least now... Uh, for the double game game 34 especially but also game 32 and game 33 i think raya is a really good option could go with uh, pickford so maybe that would be my way into having a everton defender this week against burnley but at the same time I'm pretty scarred against burnley the last few game weeks with them scoring goals against my teams every single time uh, against brentford in the free game 29 and uh, i can't remember exactly who they played the last few game weeks but they just keep scoring against my defenders so maybe that's another reason why i benched brentford but yeah, like I mentioned, Pickford could be a, a decent potential um, uh, round, potential goalkeeper rather than Raya, but I just trust Raya more, and I want to have that triple Arsenal, uh, that Arsenal triple up basically for game 34, uh, and I think Raya is going to be the best way for me to get into that uh, myself. So, so yeah, pretty happy about that. When it comes to uh, of, uh, offensive players, I've pretty much talked about all of them already this video, so I'm not going to bore you with the details on those guys. Only one is Darwin Nunez, but he's sort of the same as Salah. Playing as Man United should be a really nice fixture for him. Maybe it's his time to rest uh, this game because he played pretty much the whole game now against Sheffield United. So maybe it's time for him to be on the bench. And, uh, and uh, Gakpo being the starting striker. But at the same time, Jota, on his, uh, Jota is on his way back, but he's probably not going to make this game. He's going to be back for game week 33, may, most likely. So maybe that's the game week that Darwin gets his rest finally. But again, whether Darwin comes on and plays 30 minutes or if he stays off entirely and I get Sabarni in if, uh, for example, Saka and Darwin are out this game week, I'm pretty happy about that as well. I'm pretty happy with my bench in general, so I'm not too stressed about anyone dropping out, especially not Darwin, who could come on and score with 30 minutes left uh, as well. I, I quite like Darwin regardless against my United, whether it's 60 minutes, 90 minutes or 30 minutes, I think he's going to be a decent option, so pretty happy about him as well. And then the captaincy choice, again... I just always like to go with Salah, basically, whenever he has like a decent-ish match. And I think Man United away is actually a pretty good match at the moment because Man United are really bad defensively, uh, struggling with a lot of injuries. They had Johnny Evans go out with an injury, had Varane going off. I'm not sure if that was an injury, but he still had to go off. Lindelof is struggling as well. The lot playing at left-back has not been a good... Uh, was not a good idea for them against uh, Chelsea. And if he's playing at left-back again uh, against uh, Salah this week, I think that's going to be a really nice game for Salah. And... He's going to be a super huge differential this game week compared to last game week because he did fail last game week when a lot of people had uh, faith in him and Palmer was absolutely amazing. So most people are going to go with Palmer. I'm going to go slightly off the beaten path there with Salah, but I just really like Salah in these fixtures. Uh, I think infamously the couple a couple of years ago, two seasons ago, I think, I had a free hit when Salah played Man United away and I used that free hit and I sold Salah and he scored a hat-trick. So <laughs> that's part of the reason why I don't like using free hits um, apart from blank game weeks. I, I prefer using free to blank game week, uh, even though it didn't work out this time. I just have that horror story, and I have those doubts about free hitting away players that do really well that game week. Um, so, so, yeah, that's basically my thoughts on the free hit uh, in general, if you wanted that at the end of a team section video. But, yeah, here we are. Um, Sala, yeah, captain C choice for me. Going to cross my fingers to say he's going to do better than last time. He did get subbed off after 60 minutes this past game week against Jeffrey United, which also gives me more hope for him starting and playing 90 minutes this uh, upcoming game week because Salah usually doesn't get rested two games in a row or gets subbed off two games in a row. That was his, re his rest, basically, and now he's going to play 90 minutes against Man United. That's the big game for Liverpool, and they have a really good opportunity, especially if Diogo Dalot plays left back again because he's not comfortable playing that position, and Salah is going to be absolutely amazing. We saw Man United concede twice, uh, two penalties against uh, Liverpool or against Chelsea as well, so... Maybe they do, they do that against Liverpool, and Salah gets the chance to take penalties again and score. 
form for Liverpool. So if that's the case, I think he should be a really good captain's option. Palmer's obviously a really nice captain's option as well. But I'm just going to go with my guy Salah, who's been so good to me over the years. And, and yeah, I just trust him too much to, to not go with him, I guess. So that's pretty much it for this uh, week's Team Selection video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been 35 minutes of straight FPL talk, as I usually do on this channel. So if you like this video and uh, you'd like to see more, please subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, leave some comments down below if you have any interesting questions or anything uh, about your team as well. I can help you with your team specifically. I usually answer most of my uh, comments. Um, yeah, pretty much every single comment I try to answer uh, as best as I can. So if you have any questions about your team for this upcoming game week, uh, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to com try I'll try to answer you before the deadline uh, on Saturday. So yeah, with that, thank you for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.